Hey, it's Adrian, and if you've been on the hunt for a portable monitor for your laptop or desktop or even your phone, I think you're going to really love this 16-inch portable monitor from Satsu. So I've been using it for about two to three weeks, and I've enjoyed using it every step of the way. It's really improved my productivity when I'm using my laptop. Now, this has a ton of versatility. I think this is the standout feature of this monitor. You can see I can just go into a vertical orientation, and then from there, another horizontal orientation where it's really high up and I could stack my laptop at the bottom there super versatile and of course you can go ahead and you know angulate it whichever way you see fit so I want to get into more of the features that this comes with a big thanks to Satu for sending this out for review but let's get into it in the box we have the Sotsu portable monitor we also have this nice and soft protective sleeve for the monitor there's also a welcome letter a USB-C to type C cable rated for 240 watts and 40 gigabits of transfer speeds. There's also a manual and stickers. So the Sotsu portable monitor is a limited edition run. This is number 82 of 500. And you know, a lot of times when you buy a product, you'll get just a small thank you note, but this is actually a fairly nice letter from the owner. And it is actually hand signed, which is a neat little touch. And it just shows kind of like the care and passion that went behind designing something like this. It actually does transfer into the build quality. So let's talk about that next. So the build quality and design on here is top notch. This is just, you know, pretty much an all metal build and you can really feel it. It comes in at about 1.3 kilograms or about three pounds. And you can see it's just metal all the way around. Now you can see this is where we have the different ports. There's a display port out and SD slot power in the main type c port and a mini hmi port and then we also have a multi-function menu button here so yeah everything is really nice on here now what's really cool is that this is a magnetic stand and you can see you know that just completely detaches here and then you could just put it back in there for easy stowing you know just to keep everything nice and flush if you're traveling you know this is really easy and portable to carry around now you know, you could see a little bit of fingerprints here, even though it is a matte finish, a little bit of a fingerprint magnet. But what's really interesting here is that this main stem here can actually be angled out and you can actually prop the monitor up like that. But the cool thing about this is actually that you can attach it to this magnetic base that ships with the monitor. So overall, it's a really beautiful and premium feeling design. It just feels top notch in the hand. And you can see we have nice rounded corners here. All right, taking a look at the stand or the base, this also has a pretty good weight to it. And you can see if I flip it around, we have this rubberized uh, large feet that goes here. And this is gonna keep everything nice and planted. And you know, it does a fairly good job. Now with this actual uh, adjustment area here, you can see if I angle it down, you know, that snaps resolutely in place, nice and flush, and then this attaches magnetically back there. Now, to get this out, it actually takes me a little bit of doing, you know, it looks easy on here, but I'm actually applying quite a bit of pressure. So this is so well friction that whatever orientation or angulation you set this up in, you know, it's gonna stay nicely in place. By the way, the tilt range is from zero degrees all the way up to 90 degrees, and I'll show a bunch of different orientations where you can have the monitor set up next to your laptop. By the way, once you attach the magnetic base or stand to the back of the monitor, it actually stays nicely in place. I could just go ahead and rotate that upside down you know, and it stays nice and secure in there. If you're gonna be using your monitor on the go or on vacation, once you're ready, you just attach that rear magnetic base and you can see everything is nice and flush. Then you're just gonna slide it into the supplied carrying case and there you go. Nice and compact, easy to carry around and travel and it stays well protected. The sleeve is actually sufficiently padded so you can see I could just go ahead, you know, drop it from a little bit of a distance and it's still nicely cushioned and protected. Specs include a 16 inch TFT LCD screen. The max resolution is 2560 by 1600 and it's running at 60 Hertz. We have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio and eight bit color. There's 189 PPI. The viewing angle is negative 85 degrees to 85 degrees and the peak brightness is 350 candelas. There's a 1200 contrast ratio and 30 milliseconds of response time. There's 99% coverage for DCI-P3 to get everything set up, I'm going to connect the portable monitor into this dummy USB Type-C port on the base right here. Just going to line everything up, slide it in, and we're good to go. I'm now connecting the 240 watt USB Type-C cable from the rear of my laptop into the main USB Type-C port on the portable monitor. And then we'll just give it a second to power on. And you can see that I now have a duplicated display. And the only cable going into the Satsu monitor right now is that supplied USB Type-C cable. So it's receiving power 
and the display right from that one cable from my laptop. If you have limited USB Type-C ports, what you could also do is use a mini HDMI cable with a regular HDMI connector in and connect it to your computer just like so, and that way you don't actually have to use any USB Type-C ports. If you wanna use the portable monitor to connect to your phone, you can actually do that. So I'm just using the supplied USB Type-C cable. I'm gonna plug it into the Type-C connector port on my S23 Ultra, and it's just gonna automatically launch Samsung DeX. So while I'm going ahead and using my cell phone, I can also navigate around on Samsung DeX, you know, take a look at my apps, watch YouTube, on the side while I'm doing some other stuff on the phone. So a ton of versatility there. All right, so I have the SOTU monitor connected to my laptop using the USB Type-C cable and USB Type-C ports. But if I want to add another display, I have another portable monitor here. I can just daisy chain that display. So I'm gonna use another USB Type-C cable and it's going from the rear of the SOTU monitor to display out port. And now I've connected it to the portable monitor. And I'll just give that a few seconds to kick in and now you can see that the display is extended on all three screens. So from here what I could do is I could just go into the settings and I could just arrange the screens and what I can do after that is you can see I have this browser window here and I could just carry it over into all the screens and of course you know if you want to just be a bit more productive I could just move one of these onto this screen here and move another program or app or a game, for example, into the other screen. So you have maximum productivity. Let's take a look at all the ways we can adjust the base and there's quite a bit. So in this default orientation, it's about 13 inches from the desk to the top here. Now what I can actually do is just angle this all the way down till it's touching the table. If I wanted it nice and flush, and this is about nine and a quarter inches from the table to the top here. And of course I could just, you know, flare that out if I wanted that type of angulation or I could just bring it in or, you know, go anywhere in between and angulate it. So really a ton of options there. Now what I can also do is use this vertically so I can rotate it both this way or rotate it the other way. And of course in your computer uh, operating system, you would adjust the display to rotate it on this secondary monitor. And again, you can go ahead and angulate it pretty much any way you see fit. Another cool thing we could do is to rotate this vertically and then rotate it one more time and we have it horizontally, but now it's super high and this is about 18 inches and we can now just slot in our laptop display here and then have this stacked on top, which is really cool. If I do a behind view, you can see I can actually rotate it both clockwise and counterclockwise. So yeah, we really have a ton of adjustability options on here. And of course I could just go ahead and lower that down as well. When adjusting it from a side view, this is what it's gonna look like. So you can either just bring it all the way down and you could see you have an adjustment with this main stem here if you didn't attach it to the base. And this is with it, you know, just pretty much touching the table. And of course I could just lift this up right here and then angle it down. So, you know, you have a ton of height customizability. If you plan on extending the monitor out as much as possible, it's gonna reach about 10 and a half inches deep. To have the most minimal setup possible, you'll need to use the supplied USB Type-C cable capable of 240 watts. That's going to my laptop right now. And you can see that's enough to power the display and output the display as well. Here's one of the orientations you can use the monitor with your laptop. And I have a 16 inch display on my laptop, which matches just so perfectly with the Sotsu portable monitor. So this is the stack display, and this is with this rotated all the way to the maximum height of about 18 inches from the desk. And this is what the setup looks like from behind. Now what I can do is I can actually reverse the base, which I'll show also. So here's what it looks like. Again, this is the stack display and I do have the base reversed. So before it was pointing this way, now it's pointing the opposite way and I can have the laptop a bit closer. Now one design change I would have liked to see is if we could have some sort of cutout on this part right here so that I can actually route the cables from my laptop right through here so I can make it, you know, super flush right up against the monitor so that these ports aren't obstructed. Of course, if your ports are on the side of your laptop, it won't be a big deal. But if it's on the rear, like a lot of these gaming type of laptops, you know, it would have been good to have a cutout through the bottom there. Here's another potential orientation that you can do as well. Here's another setup that you can also try if you don't mind having the monitor a little bit higher than your laptop. If you want things a little bit more lined up and flush, you can of course angulate the Satsu monitor. So it's about the exact same height as your laptop setup. Here's another orientation you could try as well if you want something vertical. Here's another 
other vertical setup where the base is positioned away from the laptop body if you wanted to connect anything on USB Type-C ports on this side. So I've mostly been showing the monitor with the included base, which is, you know, decently heavy, but what if you wanted to just pack the monitor alone for a really lightweight setup? Well, you can still go ahead and have a bunch of adjustability because you can actually kick out this main stem here just like that. So you can have an angulation, you know, this extreme or anywhere in between, you could see you can actually angulate it to different type of angulations. And you can actually have it, you know, just fully upright. In this mode, you do have to be a little bit careful because the only thing keeping it kind of balanced is, you know, this little flat stem here. So obviously if you could kick it out just a bit, it's gonna be way more stable and not rocking. So yeah, you can actually take this, you know, on vacation without the base if you wanted to pack as light as possible. So I'm not gonna go through every single type of setup method, but you could see for a single monitor mode, we have such a bunch of different setup methods. Now, if I go to the next page in the manual, you can see this is where I showed the inverse setup. So you could have your laptop sitting a little bit more flush to the base if you just reverse the monitor on there. And of course, we also have this multiple monitor mode. So if you're gonna buy multiple Satsu monitors, you could have something like this, or you can go all the way to a four monitor setup where everything is nicely laid out horizontally, or vertically as well. So yeah, a ton of customization and versatility here. By the way, if you're finding this review helpful, please consider like and subscribe. It truly does help me out a ton, guys, but let's get back to it. If you're planning on using the monitor for a little bit of light gaming, it'll definitely do, but even with the overdrive option enabled in the menu, the refresh rate is just not high enough for any type of competitive gaming, but if you're gonna be casually gaming, it's gonna be no problem. For general use and watching movies, the monitor display is actually pretty good. Now, if you're gonna be in a super bright room and there's gonna be sunlight directly at the monitor, expect to see a little bit of glare and it may not be as bright as you would like, but in a normal type of room where you have curtains and things like that, it's plenty bright. Like even in this studio where I have a ton of lights, it's still easy to make out the display. Now, when you're watching movies like animated movies or just any type of movie in general, the contrast level is actually pretty decent considering this is not any type of OLED display. And for the price, you know, it's actually pretty pleasant to view content on here. Let's take a look at the display. So if I use the menu button at the back, this is what it looks like at the minimum brightness, but you know, you can still definitely see what's going on. But if you want it super bright, this is as bright as it gets. Now, if we take a look at both the laptop and the Sotsu display, this is definitely warmer, this is cooler, but I can go into the menu options and make this a bit cooler. Here's what the coolest color temperature setting looks like. So this is at 9,300 Kelvins, and then you can see I can go up as warm as 4,500. So I've cut the lights just to show you what it would look like if you're working in the dark, and this is with it set to the maximum brightness, same with the laptop. Now, if I use my cell phone's flashlight, you can see you can make that out, and that's because it's a glossy display, unlike the laptop where if I put the light on there, it's more of a matte display, so it's not as reflective. We do also have an option to turn on a low blue light, so this is with it on, and then that's with it off. Reading text on websites in PDF in Excel files is plenty readable and very sharp thanks to the 189 PPI. The viewing angle is also surprisingly good on this monitor because you could go from 85 degrees to negative 85 degrees. By the way, if your laptop doesn't have an SD card reader, you could use the one built into the Sotsu stand. So I'm just gonna click that right in there and it's just gonna pop it up. So it's very convenient to have if you don't have that built into your laptop. You can also get pass-through charging anytime you connect a laptop or a phone. So what I'm gonna do is connect an optional power cable into the Satsu monitor here, so it's externally powered. And now when I have it connected to my Samsung phone, you can see that it's now actively charging my phone at the same time as it's outputting the display. All right, let's go through the menu settings on the Sotsu monitor. So a quick press at the bottom of the multifunction button just lowers the brightness up and down, and there is no volume control because there's no speakers built into this. Now, if I press right on the menu button right here, it's gonna pop up the menu and you can see I can go through color, picture, input, output, power saving, settings, and information. But let's go into color first. Now I can do the backlight, but I could just have a quick shortcut like I showed earlier. I can also go ahead and adjust the brightness and you can see this is with it cranked all the way to 100 and everything's just gonna be kind of blown out and a little bit washed out. I'll put it back to the default. I believe I had it at around 50. Now what I can also do is I could go into contrast, saturation, 
color temperature and we can go from 9300 all the way to 4500 i'll put it back to 9300 i can adjust the color gamma hue and i could just reset all the colors and or make custom rgb presets now if i go into picture i do have some presets here like standard game movie paper if you're going to be reading a lot of documents photo i'll leave it on standard for now then we can go into HDR, turn that off or put it on auto for whenever it detects HDR content. I can also go and put the ba uh, blue light sorry, to on or off. I'm just going to leave it on off right now. And I can go into overdrive and put that to on or off if I plan to do a bit of gaming. And now let's go into the input source so I can go to SST cloned. I can also go to MST expanded, which is what I showed earlier when I daisy chained it. You can set the input to automatic and then you can set it to HDMI or sub. I've just left the default settings pretty much. And then you could go into power saving, which I have off. You can also go ahead and change the aspect ratio. So the default is 1610, but you can switch it to 169, three by two, and then finally four by three. And I'll put it back to the default. For languages, we do have Mandarin and Spanish and English. You can put the menu timer for 10 seconds to 30 seconds, and then you could set it to auto rotate, which is already on. And then you could just factory reset everything. And of course you could just go in and take a look at the firmware information. Now I've used a handful of portable monitors and this is definitely the best that I've used. A couple things to note though, is that there is no touchscreen functionality on this portable monitor if you need that. And there is no built-in speakers. But if you're looking for something that has, you know, great viewing angles, a ton of versatility in terms of how you can position it, where you can position it, this is definitely the best monitor I've used for that purpose. And like I showed or demoed earlier, you know, if you buy one or two of these, you could have up to a four monitor setup. And it could be a really compact and nice looking layout. Now at 500 US for the monitor, it's definitely not a cheap option. This is a premium option. And trust me, when you touch it or you hold it in your hands, you could tell by the build quality, you could tell that a lot of thought has gone into the design of this thing in terms of the versatility when it comes to insulation and you know future proofing it if you wanted to include one or more of these in your setup. I have the black version but there is also a gray version and a blue version as well. The overall picture quality is great on here with the 2k resolution in that 16 by 10 aspect ratio and you know watching movies media on here was excellent. Same with when I needed to use it for productivity text was also sharp and we have great viewing angles as well. So if you're interested in picking up this 16 inch portable monitor from Sotsu I'm going to leave some links down below for you to check it out and let me know if you have any additional questions about it this is going to be a permanent addition to my laptop setup and because it comes with the sleeve and the magnetic base that just attaches to the rear of it is just so easy to carry around while i'm on vacation or going to a business trip i hope you found this video helpful and if you did please consider checking out some of my other review videos i review a ton of products and i'm sure there's something else you'll enjoy and as always if you found this video helpful please consider liking and subscribing it truly does help me out since i'm a growing channel and i'll I'll see you in the next one soon.